Hello guys, I am Dr. Patan and today we shall be looking at five questions related to the NFL access part of the curriculum with regards to the MRCAM intermediate and the FRCAM final SBA part. We will be looking at the five questions. We will taking, we'll be taking 10 second pause to decide our options and then we'll have a small discussion and at the end we'll go through the right answers. So without wasting further time, let's start with question number one. What is the recommended dose for intramuscular adrenaline in this child? A five-year-old girl is brought in the ED with history of generalized urticaria and swelling of the lips after eating nuts. Options are 150, 200, 250, 300, 500 micrograms. If you have selected your answer choice, let's move on to question number two. What could be the underlying reason for his today's presentation? A 66-year-old patient is in the ED with swollen lips and breathlessness. You also note an urticarial rash on his upper limbs. He says he is not allergic to anything. He was seen last in the ED one day ago with right epistaxis, which was cauterized and discharged with naseptin cream. So what could be the reason behind his today's presentation? Allergy to chlorhexidine, allergy to fish oil, allergy to neomycin, allergy to peanuts, allergy to silver metal. Take a 10 second pause and choose your answer. Let's move on to question number 3. 66-year-old guy is in the ED with swollen lips, breathlessness. This is similar to the scenario before. So he is scheduled to visit the ENT next week. You have treated the patient accordingly and want to report this reaction. Who would you report this reaction to? Anaphylaxis.net, Caldicut, Corona, Datix or MHRA. Datix, for your information, is an incident reporting system here in the UK. Let's move on to question number four. After providing him with adrenaline prescription, when would you consider him for a safe discharge? 25-year-old male with a known allergy to nuts accidentally ate a chocolate at work after which he developed features of anaphylaxis. He used an auto-injector and called the EMS. While en route, his symptoms have improved. He has been stable with you without any further intervention. So for how long would you consider Observe him before deciding for a discharge. Admit for 24 hours, then discharge. After 2 hours in ED, after 3 hours in ED, after 4 hours in ED, after 6 hours in ED. Take a 10 second pause, select your choice and then we'll move on with the last question of the day. Let's move on to the last question. 50-year-old male is treated with IV adrenaline following an episode of anaphylaxis that did not respond to two doses of IM drug. He remains hypotensive despite fluids. His past medical illness include hypertension and eczema that is treated with ramipril, metoprolol and topical steroids. Which intervention will likely be indicated to improve his symptoms? Glucagon, hydrocortisone, naloxone, noradrenaline infusion, Pabrinex. Take a 10 second pause, then we shall look at the explanations given and the correct answers. Let's look at what the theoretical aspect of the curriculum covers. Anaphylaxis here is defined as sudden onset of airway breathing or circulatory compromise plus skin changes plus or minus GI upset. What you need to do is lie the patient flat with his limb elevated. That is the first step. After moving him to recess, you need to lie the patient flat with his limb elevated. Some patients would like to be seated. So that can be preferred as well because they are so short of breath. You can make them sitting and in a pregnant lady do a left lie. 
IM adrenaline should be given as the first drug of choice. That is the sole drug which is recommended. It should be given on the lateral mid thigh, lateral aspect of middle third of the thigh. And the doses are less than six months, 0.15, microgram, uh, 0.15 milligrams. Six months to six years, it is 0.3 milligrams. Greater than 12 years, it is 0.5 milligrams. Subsequent dosing is needed after five minutes if the symptoms are not resolving. There is no role of steroids or antihistaminic, antihistaminic agents. If more than two doses have been given and still there is an airway breathing or circulatory compromise, you define this as a refractory anaphylaxis. And then we move on to the refractory anaphylaxis algorithm. Here we take IV adrenaline. Ideally should be in a protected environment with intensive care input or anesthesia input. The dose recommended is Take 1 ml of 1 in 1000 and dissolve it into 100 ml saline. Then you can start it at half to 1 ml per kg per hour. So if there is a 50, 50 kg male, you can start it at 50 ml per hour. If a patient is on beta blockers, they will not respond to just adrenaline alone. You will have to consider giving them glucagon. So glucagon will reverse the effect of beta blockers and <clears throat> patient symptoms will resolve. Fluid boluses may be necessary, perhaps a large amount. In children, 10 ml per kg is recommended. In adults, use plasma light. In children, normal saline is enough, but in adults, it's said that you can use plasma light or Hartman solution as a preferred agent. If anaphylaxis has happened due to a prescribed drug, in this case, Neseptin was prescribed, which is a prescribed drug. So you need to report it to the medicine and health regulatory Healthcare Product Regulatory Agency, which is MHRA by a yellow card scheme. You need to report every anaphylaxis to anaphylaxis.net. Anaphylaxis.net, not anaphylaxis.net. If death happens secondary to anaphylaxis, this needs to be reported to coroner. If the patient has received a dose of adrenaline and after two hours of observation, you feel he is safe, he can be discharged. If somebody has received more than two doses or two doses, then consider observing for six hours. If more than two doses have been received and there are risk of biphasic reaction, then you may have to admit and observe these people. So let's look at the answers given. Here, I want to repeat, Neseptin contains chlorhexidine and it is for nasal use only. If you look closely, it mentions contains peanut oil. So always, always ask them, are they allergic to peanuts? So in this question, it's a five year old girl and you want to use adrenaline. So out of all the options, the 300 micrograms is the correct answer over here. Now let's move on to question number two. In the second one, as it was said that the patient received Neseptin cream and then he developed anaphylaxis. You need to, what could be the underlying reason? It's allergy to peanuts, which the patient may have not told. He may have told that patient is not allergic to any medicine, but he may be allergic to nuts. Once the anaphylaxis is due to a prescribed agent, you need to report it to MHRA. Anaphylaxis.net is nothing. It is anaphylaxi.net. Caldicat is the person in the NHS who's responsible for information governance. If anaphylaxis causes death, you report it to coroner. Datix is an incident reporting system in the UK. This guy had a single dose of adrenaline injection and he remained stable. So if he's safe, I think he can be discharged after two hours in the ED. I'm sorry about, I've highlighted after six hours. He's received only one dose. He can be discharged after two hours in the ED. I, last one is, this guy is on a beta blocker. So this guy needs to be given glucagon. Otherwise, he'll not respond to any uh, treatment. This, this is all for today, but before I leave, I want to give you a bonus question for which I want you to answer in the comment section below and I'll discuss that question in the next month video of the MRKM and FRKM SBA. The bonus question is over here. 
25 year old male is in the ED with an anaphylaxis. He is not known to have any allergies and has not changed to anything new. He does not take anything, any medications regularly. When asked about any food intake, he says he had a meat burger and chips about 8 hours ago. With regards to his medical history, he was seen at his GP about 3 weeks ago after a tick bite that required no treatment then. What is the most likely intervention that would be useful to treat the underlying condition? Adrenaline auto-injectors, abstinence from meat, course of doxycycline, course of steroids and antihistamines, desensitization. So write your answers in the comment section below and I will discuss this question in the next month video on the SBA. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you had liked the content, please press that like button and share this video with your colleagues who can benefit from it. And do write me some comments below if you need any improvement or a specific video. And thank you for watching once again. Good luck with your exams. Happy studying.